Welcome back from the break. Joining us still is Anne Kenyo to analyze this week's top agricultural stories. Be sure to engage with us on our social media platforms at Farm Kenya. On to our next story. As the county government of Wasin Gishu continues to urge farmers to join cooperatives, there's already one women's group that is reaping profits from their group. Kurur Women's Group, which was formed in 1986, has been able to put up rental facilities, a petrol station, among many more. Our reporter Jacqueline Kemunto sat down with the leaders of this cooperative and filed the following report. Started back in the year 1986, Kurur Women's Consumer Cooperatives is one of the women's group that has beaten all times tied to emerge among the leading women's group in Wasingishu County. Having started as a mere women's chama, the group has grown to the extent of being registered as a consumer cooperative society with close to 200 registered members. Emily Boit is Kurur's women group treasurer. Kurur Women Consumers Cooperative site Ilianza mwaka wa 1986. Ilianza kwanza kama eh, grupi ya wamama kapula waja register kama cooperatives. Ilikuwa makurupi salasina mbili wakianza sub-district hospital. Walichiunga wakaona wamama wana maternity ya wamama. Wakachiunga kama hao kurupi salasina mbili. Kama mmoja hawa ni Kurur Women Consumers Cooperative. Baada ya hapo, tukakuja kama Kurur, tukaangsa mradi yetu. Tukakaa chini, tukawanalea, tuka tutafanya nini hili watoto yetu, tupate usaidisi ya kusaidia watoto yetu. The petrol station was put up in 1988. However, due to numerous challenges that came with the petrol sector, such as fluctuating fuel prices and sometimes lacking fuel to supply their market, the women decided to lease out their property, which Emily says still earns them some good money. Kwa sahi, tumelisi na Stapex, lakini patu yuko jini ya cooperative ya Kurur. Ngawa likuwa tunaweka mafuta ilikuwa na challenges ya watena. Mafuta ilikuwa inafluctuate, inaenda ju, inarudi jini. Sasingine inatupata saingi, saile tumeleta mafuta tumeweka kwa matanki. Kwa ipei enye ilikuwa juu, wanarudisha chini. Hapo sasa inakuwa challenge sana kwa sababu kwa hapo ilikuwa hakuna otherwise. Ilikuwa mafuta tuuse kwa bei ile wameweka. Sasa ilikuwa tunapata asara. Sasingine inafluctuate, inapanda kidoko kama tuko na mafuta tunapata hapo faida. When the petrol station was up and running, Emily reveals that the women sat down again and thought of another project to put up. The income was still coming from their farm earnings and the little profit they were making from their petrol station. Tukaona to to change nyumba ya rental houses. Na tukakuwa pia wa kwanza kujenga nyumba kama ya korofa kama hii kwa siwa senda tena. Tulimalisa e rental house kwa mwaka wa 1996. Currently, the women's group is in the process of building a silo, which they say can hold a capacity of up to 6,000 bags of cereals of 90 kgs. The women have recently bought some 1 million shares at the Moisoy Farmers Union, which is in the process of building a milling plant. They say they hope to get more income once the milling plant is operationalized. For Farmers TV... I'm Jacqueline Kemunto. And what is your reaction to that story? These power in numbers. Uh, we find that there are more and more cooperatives and more and more um, organized groups coming up uh, where people are able to mobilize their, their uh, funds and um, create a business out of it. And so the more support that these structured organizations get, the better for the economy at large. So um, it's something that I fully support uh, because you can see the value in, in, in working together and creating something as a unified group. Mm -hmm. And there's truly power in cooperatives. This is such an inspirational story. Do you think that many more people, many more farmers should join cooperatives that they can also have a similar story or even a better story than this one? I would highly recommend it. 
uh, when you look at, the, say, the cooperatives that have been set up specifically for farmers, there are a lot of benefits to it. Uh, beyond just mobilizing funds, there is education uh, in terms of empowering the farmers on how they should uh, carry out their farming activities. Um, they have resources that are available to them. They can take up loans. Uh, they can share information with each other, which now creates um, a much uh, bigger bond just beyond uh, being in this structured group. And yeah, it's something that I would highly recommend. When it comes to the tea sector, this is actually right up your alley. We've seen a lot of the power of cooperatives come together. When we see a lot of tea farmers, let's say small-scale tea farmers were doing three acres, one acre come together so that they can produce more and even have bargaining power. So, do you think that that is the way to go? It is the way to go. Um, I believe it would be very a very hard task for maybe just one farmer to to meet um, the quantity that would be required to, to supply. Uh, therefore, in coming together, they are able to do more. So it's something that I, I fully support. We have seen a lot of benefits come from it because, um, as you said, they are able to have even better bargaining power, they are able to produce more, they are able to learn because within that, um, the, the cooperatives, they are given a lot of skills so that they are able to to do their farming more effectively and more efficiently. Exactly. Mm. That is quite the inspirational story because it shows just how powerful cooperatives are. I know in the dairy farming sector, we have a lot of dairy farmers who come together to form cooperatives so that they're able to get subsidized commercial feeds as well as be able to access loans for their much needed expansion of their dairy farms. Let's move on to the next story. Misconceptions stand in the way of realizing insurance uptake across Kenya. In its quest to increase the country's food security, the Kenyan government has been encouraging farmers to acquire insurance so as to protect themselves from losses, especially from vagaries of nature. Although there is a significant uptake in sub-counties such as Imenti North and Tigania West, there is still more to be done, as our reporter Hilda Kibet found out. A significant percentage of food security depends on reliable harvest from smallholder farmers. But erratic weather is making the job increasingly risky. This year, droughts has cut into harvest across many countries in Kenya, where thousands of hardworking farmers struggle to make ends meet. To ensure a steady food supply, experts have advised farmers to secure their livelihoods through insurance. There is, however, many myths that have to be debunked before which main insurance companies have taken off. We spoke to a few insurance gurus and farmers on some of the myths as well as the importance of insurance for Kenyan farmers. Actually, I've been able to learn about a few things. Poultry, some farming about avocado, some beekeeping, and also about the insurance, where one can get an insurance in his farming experience. Uh, insurance is very important, especially because of the, the four agendas of uh, the country. So we, because we know uh, agriculture is now a, is the business as uh, any other business, and it's also uh, contributing to the GDP. So that's why most of the farmers, uh, they do farming as uh, they didn't know about this other way, how they can be able to insure them. So uh, the role of the insurance, how it is coming in, is because now the risk that are, uh, the farmers are exposed to, especially when they are doing the, uh, the, uh, the farming. Because we know that uh, farming is a high risk venture, number one. Also there is an element of income, there is an element of collateral, which the farmers also are not, not be able to know. But now when the role of insurance, how it come, it will be able to help them in terms of the risk so that they can be able to have a peace of mind. Uh, you know, it, it is a myth that is, is out there, but I don't think it is really um, expensive. It is just whatever people uh, have in their minds, but when they engage us and we talk to them, they see the, the value for their money in that because of the risk that we cover. If you check it in relation to what uh, a farmer is stand to benefit, that myth is uh, it is uh, it, it won't be there because people will be able to appreciate 
the importance of the insurance. For you to get insurance, we even insure you even with one acre. Even uh, we are now doing even the greenhouses. So that is a myth that uh, people think that maybe because I, I, do, I don't have a, a large tract of land that I cannot be able to get insurance. I think insurance, it's just a myth that's there. We are now insuring, we have even farmers in our books who have even one acre, some of them even have even, even a smaller, they have planted like tomatoes and we are giving them insurance. So I think it is just a myth that is there. Reporting for Farmers TV, I'm Valentine Atieno. What are your thoughts on that story, Anne? I believe there's a need to demystify insurance. Uh, first of all, what it is and how it works. Um, in terms of uh, the kind of packages that uh, we find when, uh, with insurance, they are custom made to suit different needs. And so um, there are packages out there that are specifically designed for, for farmers. And so the need for them to understand what exactly happens when I insure my crop. Because I believe most, for most people the expectation is I'm going to put in my money and I need to get some sort of return on it. But even understanding the pooling risk of let's all put our money together and in case any of us has an incident or an issue, then they, they can be sorted out. And nobody really knows what tomorrow holds. So the idea of I must always get something back uh, is something that um, th that needs to we need to create a lot of awareness around that so that they understand the benefits of insurance. You'll find that when it even comes to premiums and the payments of the same, uh, there's a way that you can you can sign up for a package that's manageable. And in that sense, um, if anything happens, you might actually. Uh, discover that whatever you put in and what you've lost, the loss is greater than what you've been putting in. So therefore it then um, creates an opportunity for the farmer to actually understand this is something that will work for me and not against me. True. And what role do you think insurance plays in promoting sustainable agriculture? In terms of sustainable agriculture, uh, first of all it gives a form of a, a feeling of security. Uh, you know for sure that um, if, for example, I've taken up an insurance cover on my crop and the rains fail, there are packages that actually sort that out in the sense that you will get uh, some sort of a reimbursement. So you know it's not all lost. Um, and so with, with those kind of benefits that give you some sort of security, even as you, you try to be more innovative in your practice, uh, I believe it's something that a farmer should highly consider. What do you think needs to be done so that there can be an increase in the uptake of insurance? A lot of awareness. Um, just, again, demystifying what is insurance and how does it play a role in, in what the, the, the farmer is doing. Um, and we have a lot of companies that have really taken this seriously in terms of going out there and engaging the farmer on the ground and explaining to them uh, what is available for them and how um, it, it will work for them. The first area is, is awareness, a lot of awareness because with awareness comes um, conviction. And so a lot of awareness, I would say. Uh, for me, I think awareness and proper information is the key to actually promoting insurance uptake across Kenya. For you at home, let us know what are some of the biggest myths and misconceptions that you've heard about insurance. Dairy farming in Kenya has improved over the years as more farmers have realized the importance of diversifying their farming ventures so as to gain better profits. One such case is of a dairy farmer in Kitale who started his farming venture with three dairy cattle and has since turned his farm into a breeder farm and is now raising over a hundred cattle. Jacqueline Kemunto with more on this story. Domestic dairy farming is common in all parts of the country. It is a practice where families rear dairy cows for their domestic use. While traditionally the milk from these cows was meant to cater for the needs of the homestead, there's been a significant transformation where small-scale farmers generate income by selling extra milk. Archbishop John Jorogemburu is one such farmer in Kiminini, Transoya County. He started his dairy farming venture as a hobby in 2011 after his search for a job hit the rocks. Nikanza ukulima wangombe. Nikanza nangombe moja. 
Ngombe wakiwa na ndama wake kisha ba ba baada ya nikakuwa finance na, na Kenya women ka ka kaongeza ka, 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 si, six, six animals wenye walizika si, six animals kuna mwanunuzi mmoja akakuja na kanunua 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 ngombe wote sio nikarudi in the field nikanunua wengine kakuwa ngombe 10 na na wawili saa 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 za sa, 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 safari yangu ya Njaroge continues to reveal that that's where the idea of coming up with a breeder farm was born. Nimekuwa ni 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 kizalisha ma 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 ngombe pia nikiuza. Bada ni weza kuenda kwa 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 ni cooperative tu bango wakani pia pia fa finance ni kafiri kijana ngombe sa sa sarasini sa 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 kutoka kwa ngombe sarasini ni wame fika kasa sa 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 hizi ka 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 current tuko kwa ngombe 100 Since Njoroge was focused on venturing into dairy farming he chose to breed the Holstein Frisians Hizi ma, 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 ma Holstein kutoka U, U, US na kutoka, kutoka Canadarans hapo ndipo ambapo tunatoa mbegu zetu kwa 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 kwa, kwa, kwa hivyo sa 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 hizi wale wa mama ni the originals ambao wamezaa Oh, my bag, kid, come at ten pa 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 cent. You need to keep your own Apart from selling milk, Njoroge also sells his dairy herds. His farm has grown to the extent of attracting clientele such as President Uhuru Kenyatta. Kuna mbegu ai ina mbili. Kuna mbegu ya 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 sexy men na kuna mbegu ambao ni ni conventional. So ambao ni wasiana he 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 was come ka 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 kama mbaya a a a, a ananilamba aikuja on hit na msavu na sexy si si men pia a a hata mama ambao wamezaa mara ya kwa ma, 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 mara ya kwanza waikuja on hit tuna wasavu na na, na sexy men wakishika waki inakuwa vizuri but ya, a a akikuja on hit the the sec, second time kwa, kwa sababu the hizi mbegu za sex ni, ni ni expensive inabidi turudi kwa kwa, kwa, kwa conviction but imported Uzuri wake yake maziwa ni maziwa ni mengi huwezi kukuokombea na breed breed za loko. Uh, una, 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 ukimbia na the world vi, vi, vi nyinenda. Bro, bro tu, 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 roko utamark time. Tuko na challenges. Kwanza moja ni ya ni ya ni ya, ni ya, ni ya, ni ya, ni ya maziwa. So 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 so, so ya, ya maziwa imekuwa cha ni changamoto kuu reporting for farmers tv i'm jacqueline kemunto that is quite a professional story Ad. what are your thoughts on that there's definitely an opportunity there in terms of um, breeding um, i think even the the traditional farmer or rather the ones who are focused maybe on just dairy uh, farming it's an area that they can di diversify to uh, there's clearly uh, a, a good return on investment. Uh, so I believe with the right um, information and skill set, it's, it's actually a good opportunity to explore. These kind of testimonials are compelling enough uh, when you get to hear something of, of, of this nature. Uh, it's quite encouraging. I believe now beyond that is um, yeah, making information available in terms of uh, how exactly does one go about uh, the whole breeding process. Uh, it, I believe it is a science, uh, it's not my area of expertise, but I think getting access to information on how one can actually get uh, to do this, is, that would be a good starting uh, point. On today's segment of Sauti Amkulima, we focus on challenges that farmers in Yamira County are facing. I appeal to the Nyamira uh, farmers. We are growing in population. I remember 2013, we were about 700,000 uh, in terms of population, but now we are approaching 800, 900. Close will be 1 million. So to feed our people, this particular space here, for example, the number of plants in this small area is, let's say, like 20, you can have 20 uh, plantlets planted in this area. But if you had to spread and plant it on service, you can have 20 uh, plantlets 
covering this all this space. But because of this technology, you have quite a number of plants that you, you can get from a small area. So if every farmer tried to do this at the back of the house, vegetable gardens will increase to taongeza mapato ya ile chakura tunapata. Isi mashamba hakuna. Ndiyo menifanyo unaona hii nyumba ya ngombe. Nimechenga, jini kuna ngombe? Juu ya hiyo nyumba ya ngombe nimeweka nyuki juu yake. Nyuki ekiwa hapo, haijui kitu wani kinaendera hapa jini. Si unaona hata hapa juu kuna jaye. Uwa inatoke inaenda kama ndege, inaenda juu. Inaenda kama, ni kama hata kilomita moja inaenda kutofuta chakura lafu inarudi. Na ikirudi inarudi kutoka juu, inaenge kwa hii muzinga. Hapa jini, Aina haja na kazi ngini hapa jini. I'm even uh, proposing uh, with time, if uh, this country develops, we become like a uh, country, like uh, Netherlands and uh, Britain, I think. Those are the countries I've visited. With them, you know, they have introduced land is for farming. Now, all the population is in towns. You are given a house in town, and then you apply to the government, you are given uh, some land somewhere, you go and do, you, you, you specialize on, uh, on fish, They'll give you where fish will do better. You specialize on that. If you specialize on, the, on, on the dairy, you are taken where the dairy can do better, you do that. I think that will help us. Otherwise, in the future, you can see we are, like, we are, we are in our homes, but we are, we are like in town. Because there's no land. You see houses all over. Yes. Now let's look at how different agricultural commodities are performing in different markets across the country. A lot of you have been sending us feedback, comments, questions on our SMS line as well as on our Facebook page at Farm Kenya. I'll read some of the feedback that we have received from you guys. The first one is from Kevin. He says, hi there, my name is Kevin. I love your program. They're both informative and educative. Thank you so much, Kevin. We aim to bring you programs that work with you throughout your business, agribusiness journey. Uh, the second one says, Hello Farmers TV, how can one get a feature? I've developed a technology that helps farmers get their market easily. What you can do is you can drop us an email at ktnfarmerstv at standardmedia.co.ke. That's all we had for you on This Week in Agriculture. Thank you so much, Anne, for joining us, analyzing these stories with us, as well as telling us about the Naivas Ketepa deal. Thank you, Esther. It was a pleasure. Mm -hmm. We'll definitely have you back next time. So as we wrap up today's show, I have one quote for you. It says, you are not meant to crawl through life, so don't. You are born with wings, so use them and fly. I hope this helps you in your agribusiness journey. Let us know your feedback on our SMS line on your screen, as well as on our social media pages at Farm Kenya. I'm your host, Esther Gishuki. Until next time, goodbye.